Hello, hello everyone. So it is Thrifty Tuesday and for this Thrifty Tuesday I have a book shopping haul from Goodwill and I thought I'd go over some of the books I chose and why I chose them and maybe a little bit about the books if I've read them or whatnot. Um, now this one I did read. It's about a girl during the Civil War and it's told through the perspective of a southern girl and it does really make you see some of the casualties on both sides. Like when the northerners marched into her hometown, they took food, they burned down houses and things like that. At one point in the beginning of the book, like her brother died, like he, they found out he was dead and she was too upset to attend, uh, you know, she was sad about that. Um, she missed her dad and then on top of that, her mother dies and her aunt and her, um, her two cousins come to stay with her, one of which is like a baby. And um, in the book, she's constantly remembering before, like, before the war happened times with Rachel and how different her cousin is. Her cousin seems to be going mad um, and is like highly depressed and, and other things, which like I feel like with that much change is natural. And then I think at the end, her like in the book when she writes letters to her father, he's always telling her that, you know, the, they will triumph in their cause. But meanwhile, there's this boy Tally she met at a party um, before the war, and she writes letters to him, and Tally's not telling her the same thing. He's telling her all the horrors he's seeing. And actually, when he comes back, um, from the war, they do, uh, they do marry, um, which I thought was sweet, uh, but, uh, the one thing I don't know is, I, I don't know if, Yeah, her dad did die, unfortunately. Um, so she's kind of left with no one but her aunt to take care of her. Um, until she and Tally marry. Uh, but there are a lot of parts in the books that I really, really like. There's one where she talks about how she feels pretty when she's all dressed up. And is that what pretty girls think when they're all dressed up? And you have to remember, this would be like a young girl at the time of this who had had prospects of getting married and dreams and things, whose life was just torn apart by the Civil War. Um, and it's such an odd part to read in the book because, like, you're thinking it's during war. That sounds so vain. But at the same time, she is still a young girl. You know, she's... She, and she even asks herself if it if it's if pretty girls know they're pretty and if that is kind of you know does that make her vain to 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 want to know that um but her mother got ill from what i'm not sure but she had a fever and uh it and it's sad that she died before her husband didn't like come home there's so many parts about this book that are very touching and it's written in a diary type style so like and in the the it's um the book the events in the book take place in Virginia and you can definitely see where like it writes the day and everything um I would highly recommend this series there's a bunch in the series and I really like it if you're into historical fiction if you're into historical fiction or dolls, I have some books. Um, this is Meet Felicity. It is an American Girl book, and it's book one. Um, now, Felicity is an American Girl character in the American Girl doll line. And she is living during the Revolutionary War. She kind of has to decide, you know... She kind of has to, like...
kind of figure out as far as like her beliefs as far as like the Revolutionary War goes and I don't know if too much of that is mentioned in the book but there was a movie mace based off this that it was mentioned because I've only gotten to chapter three uh, there's this character called Jiggy Nye. He doesn't seem like a very nice man. He buys this horse and Felicity feels for this her horse because everyone knows he's going to treat it bad. And she really wants to save this horse and it's so sweet. Um, there's also this character, Ben, who is her father's apprentice. And in the, in the beginning of the book, when you're introduced to like, the story, she's walking into her father's store and... Um, she and her father have this inside joke where they pretend like they don't know each other. And then this customer comes in, Mrs. Like, Fitch something. Um, and basically, she gets to talking about stitching. Um, asking why Felicity like isn't practicing her stitching or whatever. And her father and Miss Fitch get to talking about how um, Felicity doesn't have much patience for stitches and things like that um her mother talks about how it's hard to keep felicity indoors um there's a part of the book that mentions that and i just really like it so far um and i love the pictures too like the drawings in these books um the historical aspect is nice too but uh yeah there's one part where, um, in the book, where Jiggy and I claims that Felicity stolen his horse, but really, uh, Jiggy and I ended up saying, you know, Um, basically, she earns the horse. Uh, the horse's name is Penny. She earns Penny's trust. And then there's at one point where she overhears um, Jiggy, Jiggy Nye basically say that Basically, that whoever could ride the wild beast could take her, and Felicity thought he meant it. So she she gets the horse to trust her. She rides the horse, and um, essentially, uh, Jiggy and I is like, you've stolen my horse. And he's very mad, understandably, because a horse is very expensive back then. Um, and Jiggy uh, d is not a man with a lot of money or, or, or means to get a horse. Um, but, uh, her father tries to explain that basically Felicity misunderstood, and Jiggy Nye reminds them that taking a horse is a crime. Um, and it kind of starts an argument, but, uh, but basically her father, Mr. Merriman has to explain to Penny that the horse doesn't explain to Felicity that Penny does not belong to her and pull Felicity off of Penny. Um, but, um, yeah, she definitely wants to, to save, save this horse. Um, and so, yeah, that is a huge part of, that is a huge part of the story is her wanting to save this horse during Revolutionary War time. Um, but she has a few run-ins with Jiggy Nye, and he definitely does not seem too nice. And in the background, uh, by the way, when... Mrs. Um, Fit, Fit, I 
this is Fitchit. Fitchit is her name. Yeah. That's why I thought it was Fitch. It, it was Fitchet. Um, where, like, um, Yeah, Miss Fidget is basically known in the book as, like, the local gossiper and whatnot. And then it also talks in the book about, like, Felicity's lessons with her mother. And uh, her mother says, and here's a quote from the book, Yes, my lively girl, laughed her mother. I know very well there's no use trying to keep you inside when your mind is already out in a way. And Felicity said, thank you, mother, as she flew out the door and her mother calls for her hat. And so a lot of the little things like that definitely portray the character of Felicity. She's very energetic, just, I don't know, she's just very sweet. I, I personally fell in love with the character and that's why I wanted to get the book. The next book I have, I watched the movie to this, but I have not read the book, so I cannot tell you much about it. But it is Meet Molly. And the one thing I do know about is it's about when World War II started. And it's based around Molly, who's another American Girl character. It is book one. I got lucky twice. Um, I do know there was a there's a part in the book from what I could see that matched up with the movies. And that is that there's this lady who babysits um, Molly. And Molly doesn't really care for this lady. Um, but this lady's son was off to war, and Molly hates turnips, and that's what this lady cooks Molly, and she wants her to finish her turnips, and, um, Molly does end up finishing her turnips, even though she doesn't like them. I love turnips, but I love odd veggies, so that may just be me. Um, so we'll put that aside, because I haven't read it, I can't tell you too much, but if I do read them, I do tend to do, like, book discussions which may include like a book summary my favorite parts of the book quotes from the books and things like that um there is a playlist on my channel i did one of annie of green gables and they may not all start out the greatest but i think i'm gonna get better as i go along um i think they're fun to watch either way um but yeah then there's also uh the these these Monster High books I got. I got book one and book two. Um, book one is about Rochelle Goyle, Venus McFly Trap, and Rebecca Steen's first day of studies at Monster High. Um, and it's a Monster High is a school that's just for monsters. The girls become fast friends and um, on, on the way from class and while making friends with Frankie Steen and becoming frenemies with Cleo Denial. Um, the trio aren't the only new girls. Dragon Whispering Teacher Sylvia Flapper and her army of hallway patrolling trolls have joined the faculty. But when all the other students start acting as though Miss Flapper is the most fantastic teachers ever, the three new school friends uncover a plot to take over the school and it's up to them to kind of stop the plot. Now, I love Monster High. I love the characters. I have these three dolls. I originally started collecting the dolls and watching the movies. And now I'm getting into the books, too. Um, I got into, like, the video games as well. Um, and I have a video game and another Thrifty Tuesday haul. Uh, I'll link a playlist. And maybe it'll be up by the time you see this video. Maybe it won't. We'll see. Because I've got a lot of videos in pre-recording, but I don't know when I'm scheduling all of them. Um, and I don't remember when I scheduled all of them, um, the ones I've already scheduled. Uh, and in the second one, um, basically Rochelle, Rebecca, and Venus are kind of settling in at Monster High. They're, they're getting involved in the student body. Rochelle is tutoring other students. Rebecca is joining like this ultimate roller maze team which is like basically a roller skating league and venus is starting a compost pile with lagoon of blue uh the, the ghoul friends may even perform in torlai and cleo's hex factor talent show 
But during Mr. Mummy's catacombing class, the ghouls find a doll of doom that hints at a new threat to the school. And then white cats start showing up around the creepateria, a bad omen for the monsters. Can the girls begin to figure out... Can the girls... The, the ghoul friends begin to wonder if their fun is over, is Twirly playing tricks, or is something more sinister at work in the halls of Monster High. And it definitely looks like a good read, but I also love the box art. And I definitely love collecting books about dolls and about some of the dolls I own. Like, I love American Girl, Monster High books. I also own some Ever After High books. And I only own, like, a couple of the Ever After High dolls. I actually got the books before I ever got the dolls. Crazy, right? But, uh, yeah. Now, we all know I'm a huge Disney lover. I found this Disney Bedtime Stories book. It says it has 200 stickers inside. I don't believe I saw any stickers whatsoever. So I think those are long gone. But the book looks like new. And it's got a bunch of different bedtime stories in it. And I like picture books before I go to bed because they're easy to read. The print can sometimes be bigger. I like the pictures. I also like them when I'm upset because I find it's harder to read and comprehend a chapter book when you're upset. So it's a nice coping skill to have a picture book in front of me. Just as somebody who's autistic, I find that very helpful. You know, even just looking at the pictures and seeing my favorite characters. It's got one... Like, that's a Monster Inc. story. Um, it's got... It's got a Lion King story. A Bambi story. Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch. Donald Duck. Pinocchio. Brother Bear. Cinderella. Ratatouille, Toy Story and Beyond, Finding Nemo, Dumbo, Chicken Little, The Aristocrat, Sleeping Beauty, Winnie the Pooh, Pic Mickey Mouse, Cars, and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And what I actually really like about this is they did not just stick to, like, the Disney princesses. So, like, we see, like, Brother Bear, we see Ratatouille and some other ones, so that was exciting. It does actually look like there are, like, some stickers that have been stuck on here as somebody like finished each bedtime book. So that's weird. They're like little star stickers. Somebody was keeping track of what they read. And I love, I love the artwork. The artwork to me is really cool. Um, I love seeing the Disney characters in this book and like the way they've, they've done some of the art. Um, yeah, and I, I want to know what's your favorite Disney character, um, and what's your favorite Disney book? Like, I know Disney has published some different books, like, they've published the Disney Descendants books, they didn't write them, but they published them, and there's a few other of my favorite books that were published by Disney, um, so Disney actually has... Disney, they actually have a Disney publishing site, um, and like, one of the books that I didn't realize that was apparently published by Disney, uh, or that's on the Disney publishing site is Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Uh, they have, like, a little mermaid book, and I'll actually uh, show you my screen so you can see some of what I'm looking at real quickly. But, um, yeah, they have the little mermaid, Percy Jackson, and it shows some of their franchises. They have Mickey Mouse, obviously. Uh, they have Avengers, X-Men, and I know they had Descendants. They have some Ge National Geographic books, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can definitely look at, like, the franchises 
ages bestsellers like they publish artemis fowl disney chills which looked really good another one that um was really good that i happened to read was kingdom keepers i absolutely loved those books uh there's the kane chronicles which l look good they're also by uh rick rio dan and i actually read most of the percy jackson series um i would love to at some point read the rest uh they have like a mandalorian book series um, they have, like, villains, and it's basically got, like, the fairest of all, the wicked ones, Never Never, Fire and Fate, which is apparently coming soon, um, different books about different evil villains, like, it says, Poor Unfortunate Soul, Fairest of All, The Beast Within, um, Mother Knows Best. And, and and so much more it's it's kind of crazy just how many books they actually have because you wouldn't you wouldn't realize it um they have the Serafina novels which I haven't read um but uh yeah I, they also have some authors that are popular um one of which wrote Disney Descendants. She also wrote a book called Afterlife, The Ring and the Crown, Blue Bloods, I guess. That's interesting to me. Very interesting. Um, Gates of Paradise. There's even some books I haven't even heard of um, and wouldn't know about if I wasn't like looking at. So you can definitely see some of the different authors. They have Brightly Woven, which is apparently by, you know, Disney Publishing. It's a graphic novel. Um, the Dreadful Tale of the Prosper Redding. I can only imagine what that's about. I guess it, it must have something to do with Red Riding Hood, I would think. Um, but you can go, like, write down some of the authors that they, they have. Um, and usually a book will say on it if it's by Disney Publishing. Um, but yeah, you can go, you know, basically see a bunch of books that they have. They have a lot of kids' books, too, but they actually have some really good young adult or chapter books. And, um, as well as the, the children books that you would have guessed they, they have. Um, but they have so 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 many books and you can definitely search for like young adults for like 9 to 12 year olds and things like that um but uh i i'm i'm i i'm happy that disney has this because it definitely is fun to see your favorite disney character come to life in a different way um, and it, it was so interesting when I looked, was looking at my books and realizing a bunch of them were published by Disney, I guess. So it was, it was kind of funny, um, for me anyways, cause I wasn't, you know, expecting that by any means. Um, and I'm sure there are more than just what's listed here. Um... But it is very exciting. So definitely something to check out if you are a reader. Um, definitely a place you should check out. And, and maybe you can get some cool books. Um, but other than that, I'm going to wish you all a lovely night. And I will see you all tomorrow. Um, oh, and by the way, um, the, the Disney bedtime storybooks, we will be reading some of those stories on our Northern Gamer bedtime stories uh segment so please check that out it's it's basically northern kids bedtime stories it is geared towards children directed at children um so definitely you know definitely would be fun to watch and cuddle up with your niece or nephew or child or whoever and uh you know get to hear a little bit of a book 
and whatnot. And yeah. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.